Hey guys, ZZ Coasters here. Steel Vengeance is known as one of the best roller coasters on the planet. It's many enthusiasts number one, including mine. It's a fun coaster and every single element seems to pack some sort of new thrill. However, not every element can be perfect. This is the elements of Steel Vengeance ranked. Let's jump right into the rankings. In order to rank the elements at Steel Vengeance, we have to figure out what really counts as an element. Here's the definition I've come up with. It has to be a part of the coaster that is distinct, unique, and an interesting concept. So, not every single stangle dive or airtime hill in the second half counts as an element. There are also some that might not fit this definition, but I've included them because I like them, so they're in there anyway. Coming in at last place, at number 12, is the Speed Hell. This is genuinely the only disappointing part of Steel Vengeance as a whole. It looks like you would get some incredible airtime on such a small hill directly after the first drop. But all you get is a small pop of something that's somewhere between floater and ejector. Not the insane sustained ejector that you would expect. I don't know if it's because of the shaping or something's wrong with it, but it just doesn't deliver that sort of thrill that you would expect from an element like this, which is why it's only at number 12 and not higher on the list. Coming in at number 11 is the third inversion, the zero G roll during the second half. This is a fun element, but it's pretty basic. It has the zero G forces and the rolling, but it's just a pretty basic zero G roll. Seems honestly like a bit of a filler element, but it's still fun, but it's not good enough to be any higher on the list. Coming in at number 10, we have another element in the second half, which is the small outer banked hill. This is a very interesting element, especially because it doesn't seem to get talked about at all among enthusiasts. It seems like on a smaller scale RMC, it could be considered one of the best elements, but because it's on Steel Vengeance, it doesn't get talked about a lot. It's pretty low on my list, but I still like it a lot for what it is, and I thought it was worth putting on the list because it's just a really interesting element to the ride. At number 9, we have this thing, the double up, zero G roll, turn, wave turn element. Oh, okay. It's called a step up under flip, which translated to normal people speak, is a double up followed by a zero G roll and a wave turn. It's a very interesting element. Because it's more of an upward barrel roll than an actual zero G roll, there's not that much zero G except for the end, where it continues to roll after it hits zero degrees into a 45 and eventually 90 degree wave turn. It then turns into the next element, and overall it's a very fun experience. It has airtime, it has that turn, it has some laterals, and it's got, of course, the roll. It's overall a really fun element, but my second least favorite inversion on the coaster, just because it doesn't have a lot of whip, and it just seems like there was some better stuff they could have done with the space. Coming in at number 8, we have the last barrel roll. This is during the second half. It's a very slow roll compared to the other inversions on the coaster but that's why I like it. It's got epic hang time, it's got some zero G to it, it's a fun inversion, and it's the second best inversion on the ride just because of that slow, hang timey feeling. It feels like it'll never stop rolling. And it being in the structure of the ride gives that insane head chopper feeling that 
honestly is very disorienting. Coming in at number 7, we have the final run of Airtime Hills. This is an interesting element, so I decided to group all of the individual Airtime Hills into one single element, which I'm calling the final Airtime Run. This is basically just a bunch of small bunny hills one after another with some turns in between. It's very fun experience, especially with the ejector airtime coming over the tops of all the hills. It's very intense and fun and a great finale to an awesome ride. Number 6 is the snake dive. Yes, that is what it's called. Snake dive is, is the what we're calling this, and it, it's a full inversion. It does get you all the way to 90 degrees, but it just or 180 degrees. But when you get there, you snap right back. It twists you upside down before whipping you back over the other way. It's essentially a zero g stall without the actual stall. It's the whippiest part of the ride, in my opinion, and just a really fun, intense experience. It's kind of like if Iron Guazi's death roll whip you back the other way because it is traveling downwards and immediately goes up into the double up into the mid course break run. It's a really fun element and experience and it's my favorite inversion on the coaster. Kicking off our top five, we've got the top hat. This is essentially a very tall airtime hill that curves on the way up and the way down. It's perfectly proportioned and profiled to give that awesome airtime at the top and bottom of the hill. The back row is the best place to experience this element, as in the back row, you're out of your seat for the entire time going down the top hat, and it almost goes vertical to vertical, so there's a lot of airtime to be had coming over the top hat. It's an awesome element. Coming in at number four, We've got an element that doesn't really seem to get talked about a lot, but I think it's deserving of a top four spot on the coaster. This is the ejector wave turn. It's a very interesting ride experience. You're going up into what seems like a wave turn, but then it bows outward to give the most intense ejector on the entire ride. It's a crazy experience. and. It gives what I think is the best airtime on the whole ride. It's crazy, and I love it. Number three goes to the first element you're going to experience, the first drop. It comes right after the lift hill and throws you right over the top, especially in the back row. You're out of your seat the whole way down until you hit the pullout, which has some good positives. It's my number two first drop of any coaster, with only Maverick coming in before it. It's an awesome ride, and one of my favorite experiences on the coaster. Coming in at number two is an amazing element that I'm guessing a lot of you would put at number one. It's very close for me. This element is the Outer Bank Airtime Hill. It's an incredible airtime experience. It gives some incredible ejector that's just so sustained, and the laterals on the way up and the way down are crazy. That transition is so whippy, I can't even explain it. It's just so intense and a great experience that was perfectly profiled by the people at RMC. It's the second best experience on the whole ride. It's just that amazing. And finally, Number one spot goes to the mid-course brake run. Just kidding, it's the double up. This is an awesome moment of the ride that's the last element of the first half. It goes straight up and then starts to go down and turn and then goes back up into the brake run. The second turn up has a good pop of ejector but that's not the main attraction. The main attraction is the first up, which essentially functions as a small airtime hill. It's in the perfect proportion to give the most sustained, most intense, most insane experience of any airtime on any coaster. 
It's my number one element on Steel Vengeance and my number one moment of any coaster. It's just so crazy. It's my favorite element of the coaster and it's just, I'm really surprised that it doesn't get talked about as much as it should be. Thanks guys for watching this video from ZZ Coasters. If you enjoyed the video, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe as that helps me with the YouTube algorithm. Hit the bell to get notifications whenever I release a new video. Leave a comment saying what your favorite element and ranking of the elements on Steel Vengeance is. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. ZZ Coasters, signing off.